Hello everyone, this is Shannon for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, we are going to do a really fun faux batik technique to create these really beautiful backgrounds. I'm going to start today's card with some 110 pound white cardstock. I've cut it a little bit smaller than an A2 panel, so it's 4 and 8 by 5 and a half. I'm going to use Waffle Flower's XOXO stamp set I'm using some beautiful solid stamps from this set. And I'm going to start today's project simply by ink blending on this panel. I'm using some Gina K ink, some really bright, vivid colors. This first color is Wild Dandelion, just kind of doing a regular on the, the panel. And now I'm moving on to a pink, and this is Passionate Pink. And as you can see here, I'm not being very careful with my ink blending. I'm, I do definitely have some splotchy parts here and there. I'm not worried about getting a perfect blend, just getting some color down onto the paper. This is going to be our first layer of ink. So after I've ink blended this, I'm going to take my water and just spray some water onto the panel, just a small amount. I just want to distress this a little bit. So I sprayed it on, then I'm going to take my towel and lift up some of that water, and that will remove some of the ink. Now I'll just dry everything really well with my heat gun. And as you can see here, that water adds some nice little water spots, just kind of breaks it up a little bit. Now I'm going to add some anti-static powder over the entire panel, and I'm going to grab some Versamark ink and ink up some of these solid stamps from the XOXO stamp set and stamp them on to the panel. Now because the this um, Versamark ink is clear. It's very difficult to see, so I'm going to grab my embossing powder and pour it on in small sections here and there because that makes my previously stamped images a little bit more visible with that embossing powder on. And I am using clear embossing powder, and what this clear powder will do is kind of trap that pink and yellow ink underneath. And this is going to help to make some really beautiful contrast for our batik. So I'm going to continue stamping until I have my whole panel stamped in the design that I'd like. And then um, after I stamp these two last little um, florals, I'm going to pour on that embossing powder and now I'll heat set everything. So I just am finishing heat setting this last corner here. And then I'll hold it to the camera so you can kind of see where I did end up stamping these leaves and flowers. It's a little hard to see again because it is that clear embossing powder. So I'll try to get a little shine here so you can kind of see where I stamped those flowers. Basically about two thirds on the left and just a little bit on the right. Now I'm going to start to fold. So this is where it starts to get very kind of scary. I start with horizontal folds and I'll just go work my way all the way down the length of the panel and I'm folding and folding using my bone folder just to help and increase getting nice sharp folds. Once I've done it all horizontally, I'll start doing them vertically and you can see I'm doing them angled. I like them nice and angled. It's just more interesting that way than if they're perfectly straight. And um, you can see my paper is ripping a little bit. This is again 110 pound cardstock so it's really thick. Um, you can use a 80 pound weight if you'd rather. If it, It's just, um, I really like that the 110 pound holds up really well to water spots. So after I've done all my folds, I flipped it over and I'm just using my bone folder on the back to kind of smooth out the background. Now for the fun part. So I've got two other Gina K inks here. I'm using blue raspberry first and I'm going to go over ink blend right on top of my stamped images and all those creases that I created when I folded the cardstock. And I am applying this blue kind of over the yellow areas just because I know yellow and purple, my next color, don't mix too well. So I want to make sure I get the blue on the yellow areas and not the purple. But as you can see here, this blue is this ink blending on top is bringing out all those beautiful creases and as well as our embossed flowers and leaves. It's just such a cool technique. So now I'm moving on to my purple and I'm going to continue to kind of ink blend all over this panel so it's completely covered. So I cannot take credit for this technique. I learned it from Heather Nichols from Pine Feather. I just changed it a little bit by doing that first layer of ink blending with the pink and yellow. And by doing that ink blending, I was 
tracked that ink when I did the heat embossing on top and I just like that little addition of color. So once I'm done um, doing my second layer of ink blending, I just cleaned all my embossed areas with a towel and now I'm spritzing some water onto my panel to again add some more water spots after I kind of spritz all over. I'll grab my towel here and just pick up some of that ink. I just like that little bit more additional distressing that that adds. So now I'm going to adhere this panel on to a panel of the same size. So another 110 pound white cardstock panel that is four and an eighth by five and a half. Cause again, I cut this a little bit smaller than an A2 panel. And I'm using liquid glue here to adhere it down because this panel is definitely warped up a little bit here. So that's why I'm adhering it down onto another panel. It does two things. It really kind of straightens everything out, but it also um, will add a little bit more thickness and give me a little bit more dimension on my final card. And I just grabbed one of the plates from my cuddle bug here to just kind of apply even pressure over this entire panel to again kind of flatten it out a little bit more because we did do a lot of folding and creasing to this panel. So now I'm going to adhere this panel down onto an A2 card base made from 110 pound white card stock. And I'm sure you may have noticed the print on the back of this panel and on the back of the panel that I batiked. These are just leftover or actually they're misprinted sheets. Um, from Waffle Flowers calendar and I try not to waste paper whenever possible and they're nice and heavy 110 pound weight. So I went ahead and heat embossed a sentiment from the balloon messages stamp set. It's in white embossing powder onto some black cardstock and I just trimmed it down and added some foam tape to the back of it to pop a little bit and then just stuck it down into my card. And with that sentiment down this that completes this card. And I'll just hold it to the camera here so you can get a good look at the beautiful colors and texture. I love this technique. I actually made a second card with just a little different design um, to how I stamped those um, flowers and leaves. But I cannot wait to try more colors with this technique. It's just so fun and I know I'm going to be very addicted to this. I hope you guys enjoyed today's cards and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Waffle Flower. And you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.